What's up YouTube? Have you wondered if the Peter McKinnon backpack from Nomadic is worth it? Well, that's what we're here to talk about today. Welcome back, my name is Ben Nielsen and today we're talking about the Peter McKinnon backpack by Nomadic. This was a Kickstarter, it was in the spring of 2021 and I was one of the early backers for it and so I received it when they finally came in. There were some delays due to COVID, there was lots of problems along the way getting them to us so they didn't come in until about four months ago and I have been using this thing for four months so that I can give you guys a review. So like I said, I was an early backer so I was one of the very first people to receive this backpack but I have waited for a little bit to review it because I wanted to have a wide variety of things that I'd done with it. So let's talk a little bit about what it is. If you don't already know, this is a bag designed by Peter McKinnon and Nomadic together. Now Nomadic makes lots of different types of bags. They make travel bags and camera bags and different kinds of slings and backpacks and all kinds of stuff. They are very experienced in the bag space and they've launched on Kickstarter many times to great success. This was the only time I think that they've ever delivered late. So they know what they're doing when it comes to making bags. Peter McKinnon is a photographer and YouTuber and he's got a lot of respect in the YouTube community. They use him to, of course to be able to promote these bags and I do think that he is involved if fair amount in telling them what he thinks photographers or videographers need out of these bags because he is putting his name on it and he's a product guy. He really does care about putting out products with his name on them that he thinks are high quality. So that's kind of where this is coming from. Now they've launched a couple of these bags. This is the 25 liter, so the one that launched last year and it is smaller. Let me give you kind of an idea of the size here. So that's kind of where we're at with that. And I, when I did the unboxing, I shot it overhead. I didn't set up the overhead camera today because I think you guys have probably seen it or you can view lots of other videos with the overhead on it. I'll just kind of tell you about my experience here. So the first one was 35 liter. I don't have that one. It was way too big for my needs. I wasn't even interested in buying it, but this one is much more a regular backpack size, but it's geared towards photographers. So let's talk about what I've done with this backpack in the last four months. I've done almost everything that I would do with it. So I travel a lot, so I've taken it traveling. I've taken it on road trips and camping trips. I've taken it on trips that are focused just on travel and a trip that's focused primarily on photography. I've taken it on shoots for weddings and I've also used it just as an everyday bag going to and from my day job. So I've used it in a lot of different scenarios. The one thing that I haven't used it for yet that I will probably be using it for is flying. So I haven't had a chance to get on any flights with it yet, so I don't really know about its workings when you are kind of in a tight space like an airplane, getting it under the seat in front of you or putting it in the overhead bin and how safe that feels. So I can't really speak to that yet, but as far as car travel goes, I've used it a lot for Yellow Van Travels, which is my other channel and the blog that I write with my wife. So I've used it quite a bit for carrying camera gear and also for carrying other types of gear. So that's kind of where I'm coming from and I think that that is of course the sweet spot for this bag. That's what it was intended to be for was people could use it for their everyday carry. They could use it all the time. It wasn't so huge for that but it still provided photographers with the kind of protection that they need for their gear. Which is the next thing that I want to talk about. This bag costs $300 from Nomadic's website or from Amazon, which I will link in the description below. Of course, that will be an affiliate link. If you decide to purchase through that link, I'll get a little kickback on that. So, 300 bucks for this bag. When I got it on Kickstarter because I was a backer, I got it for $200. That's a big jump from $200 to $300 and it kind of changes the calculus on this value. But I think that there are people coming at photography from a lot of different angles and depending on where you're at in your journey, $300 for a bag may seem like a lot or $300 for a bag may not seem like a lot. It really depends on where you're coming from and also what kind of gear you're using. When you're using a camera that costs maybe 500 bucks then you probably are like, well, why would I spend $300 on a bag to carry that camera around? Because that bag costs almost as much as the camera. When you've spent $1,000, $2,000, $3,000, $5,000 on a camera, 
that starts to change that calculus a lot. And that's one of the reasons that I invested in this bag is because I knew I was working towards more expensive gear. I'm shooting on the a7 III, and so that camera used cost me about $1,200. It can go even used still for as high as like $1,500. And I knew I would be buying some lenses and things like that. So I wanted something that could keep my camera gear safe. You get to that point where you've kind of crossed the threshold and it makes sense to purchase a bag like this that is going to be more expensive. The reason you want to do that is because a bag like this is going to have more like padding and be safer for your camera. The camera is going to fit more snug in here. It's not going to move around so much when you are walking with this, especially if you need to walk a long ways or you're throwing it in the back of a vehicle and it's going to get bumped around. You want something that's going to keep it safe. So this bag is set up for that kind of thing. Now it's more set up for that kind of thing if you buy the cubes with it. And of course that's going to increase your purchase by actually quite a bit. Nomadic seems to really want to charge you a lot for the cubes. I did not purchase any of the cubes in the original Kickstarter and I didn't do any of the add-ons for the Kickstarter later so I don't have any cubes. All I have is the ladder system which comes standard. So this ladder system here can be popped in and it's got velcro on it so you can kind of rearrange that there. And so you can arrange how you want the bag to be based on the size that you want it to be for your different camera gear or the other gear that you're bringing with you. So that's all I have is the ladder system. I don't have the cubes. The cubes I thought were really expensive and not worth the price. And unfortunately, it doesn't look like there's any way to buy those cubes after the fact. So you can't go and purchase those cubes separate. So if you want them, you need to buy them when you buy the bag. But like I said, they add quite a bit. So they're just little camera cubes and they can hold different gear, but they are like 40, 50 bucks a piece to get those and add them onto your bag. So it gets kind of expensive pretty quickly. So was it worth it? Well, let's go through some of the pros and cons and then I'll tell you whether or not I think it was worth it for me and whether or not it would be worth it for you. So let's hit the pros first because I think there are lots of pros to this bag. I have absolutely loved using this bag over the last four months. I think that it really, really has helped me out and I really like it. And I'll continue to use it into the future. It is super helpful and great to have around but let's hit on some of the main pros. The first pro is there's lots of space in this bag. It is really quite spacious for the size of the profile that it takes up. And it, it takes up a good chunk, right? Like this is not a small everyday backpack, but there's a lot of space in there. You can hold a lot of gear. Let's talk about some of the gear that I hold in there. Well, the a7 III, obviously, I'm taking that with me on travel and I'm taking it on shoots. I also have my backup camera, which is an a6000, and then several lenses. None of my lenses are really huge, like big telephoto lenses, but I've got several lenses that I put in there. So that's kind of what I'm carrying. And then of course, I also have the Osmo Pocket, which is our vlog camera, the Osmo Action, which we use for any kind of water activities or action sports, things like that. And so I'm putting all of that in there. And then of course, I'm also always carrying my iPad Pro with the Magic Keyboard. I'm always carrying that so that I can do editing on the go. So I've got all of that in there if I'm like going on a shoot I have a little bit less if I'm just doing the travel. In that case, I'm just going to have whichever cameras I need for that particular travel day. But I'm always going to have that iPad with me. I'm also going to be carrying, you know, a cord organizer so that I can charge everything as well as some extra batteries. And all of that kind of stuff is going to be there in the bag. So I've got a bunch of different things in there and there's quite a bit of space. Now that space can be organized a couple different ways. With the ladder, you can take the ladder out completely and just have it go straight down to the bottom just a big open backpack. You can have the ladder give you more space in the top part or more space in the bottom part. Now I normally will store my camera gear in the bottom part. So depending on how much I bring, will determine if I have that ladder space be more on the bottom part or more on the top part. There's plenty of space in there for most of the gear that you would need on a typical day, I think. But if you're someone who travels with lots and lots of gear, then maybe you want the 35 liter, the one that they made before. Okay, I already mentioned this a little bit, but I think that ladder is a big pro. The ladder does come included, so you always get that when you buy the backpack, unlike the cubes. And being able to adjust the size of those big pockets really is helpful in getting the right thing in the right places. So I really like that feature. It was one of the main selling features that Nomadic put forward in the Kickstarter and I think it does work really well. The next pro is that it is nice and sturdy. I feel safe putting my camera in there, which is the main point. That's probably the biggest thing. If I feel safe putting it in there. This bag, when you set it down, 
it can stand up on its own because it is so sturdy. And so I feel like it's really going to keep my camera safe while I'm lugging it around. So that's really important. The next thing that I think is really, really useful are these two water bottle pockets on the side. They are big. They can hold a big water bottle or a good size travel tripod. So I think that's really, really useful. And because there's two of them, you don't have to choose between having a water bottle or having a tripod. And I like that. When I'm using it for everyday carry, I don't have to choose between having a water bottle and having an umbrella. So having two pockets is really important and having them expand, but also be able to fold right back in and snap with those magnets that's really useful it really shows the attention to detail that went into this bag and lastly i would just say it's really comfortable to wear it's a comfortable fit it's got that chest strap that you can clip in it does not have a waist strap by default you can purchase that after the fact i think on their website but peter mckinnon doesn't like waist straps so it doesn't have that but it's not so big as the 35 liter that you would necessarily need it you won't be carrying so much gear that you would necessarily need that waist strap and it can kind of get in the way so that's not something that i missed on it so that's kind of it for the pros, it's just a really great all around backpack and I like to use it day to day. Now let's talk about some of the cons, some of the things that are not as great. This first con might be specifically related to me and my workflow, but I work on the iPad Pro with the Magic Keyboard, and then I have that Ori grid attached to the back so I can hold hard drives and things like that. And the laptop sleeve on this backpack is just a little small for that because it does get pretty thick when you start adding all of that in. If you just had an iPad in like a folio case or if you just had your laptop, I think most of those are going to fit fine. But for me, it's just a little bit snug and I would like to be able to maybe keep like a folder in there for like important papers or things like that, especially when we're traveling. I can't fit them together. So I can fit the iPad in there and I do use it like that, but I wish that it was just a little bit bigger for my needs. The next one is a con and a pro because it's not squishable. So you can't squish this bag into a lot of places because it is sturdy. That's what you want from your camera bag. You don't want your camera bag to squish. But when you're using it every day, for example, I ride the bus a lot to work and you can't really just like get it into places. And that's why I think on the plane, it might not be as useful because I'm not sure it's going to just like slide in under the seat very well and it might need to go up top, which of course the roller bag needs to go up top. So there's that whole thing. So it's not squishable. And that's just something I think to know that can be a pro or a con depending on how you're using it. The next thing is there are straps that go into these side things here so that you can secure your tripod if it's taller. And those straps are just finicky. I've had them pop open and I haven't felt super safe with them here. You can also use them on the back, but again, they don't work super well. And I've seen it suggested that you just thread like a bungee cord through these loops on the back. That's probably what I'll end up doing is just having some place to kind of like stash something like a jacket or something like that there. So those straps are not great and I wouldn't recommend buying extra of those because they haven't worked very well for me. While we're here and we're talking about this back here, a con here is that there's no pockets up here. So there's nothing on this outside for like quick access for a passport or something like that. It's just not there. And it was there in the original prototypes, but we knew well before we backed it that that wasn't going to be there. They said that in the initial reviews. So it's not like they tricked us. It's just, it would have been nice if they had left a small pocket here just for some quick access items, maybe keys or passport or something like that. Instead, you have to open up the top and your quickest access pocket is this one right here. Is that hard? It's not super hard, but it would be nice if there were one on the outside. Okay, while we're up here at the top, let's talk about another problem that I run into frequently. I don't know if you can see this here, but these zippers, they run into each other all the time. So the zippers for the top part, that garage area, those are always bumping into the zippers for the main pocket. And they are different kinds of zippers. So one of them has the nomadic symbol on it and the other one has just like this little rubber tip on it. You can kind of tell the difference once you know what they are, but they're bumping into each other. You're always grabbing the wrong one and opening the wrong thing to start off with. And I just think that they could have built in more space up here to stop that from happening. Cause that's probably one of my main like constant annoyances with this is just those zippers bumping into each other all the time. And then the last con for some people will be the price. For me, $200 as a Kickstarter backer was worth it. I think this bag was totally worth 
$200. Helps keep my gear safe. It's a great backpack, fits nicely. I could have got a cheap backpack, but it wouldn't have been as good a quality. It wouldn't have worked as well. At $300, I think that becomes a tougher sell. So you really have to decide for you how much gear you're carrying with you, how often you're doing it, and how valuable that gear is. Is it worth it to you to protect it in something like this? There's lots of camera bags on the market. There are so many camera bags on the market, but this one works really well for me. So I'm enjoying using it. And I think you can justify it at $300, but it's much harder to do that than it was at $200. And unfortunately, there's no time machine and there's no way for you to travel back in time if you didn't back it initially. So those are basically my thoughts on it. I'm going to continue to use it. If I have further thoughts or experience other things with it, I can put a comment here and pin it to the top, or I can do another video if it's a big deal updating you. But go ahead, drop in the comments. Let me know what questions you have about this bag. Let me know if you have this bag or another camera bag that you love to use. We'll chat in the comments and I will see you in the next video.